now we can get started. All right, great. So, so let's. Uh, I think what I love to. I mean, uh, Rami and I have prepared a set of questions, but before we go to the questions, I love to understand how this project came alive. What got you together? Right. Uh, what's the story behind the book? All right. So Esther, you know, uh, you have met so many senior, seasoned HR professionals in the country. Uh, we rub shoulders with them in various uh, public forums, professional uh, forums. Even in the organizations, we have a line of sight as to what impactful work they're doing. Yeah. And uh, that always raised curiosity in my mind as to what is what is the life behind all of the things that we see in front of us? What kind of uh, life journey they have gone through and uh, how they've grown to become who they've become. And uh, I then had this loose idea and I connected with uh, Professor T.V. Rao. And I said, look, I've never written a book. So I'm not even going to start on this journey unless you do handholding and be a partner <laughs> in this project. And TV, who is very fond of me, is, was very indulgent, but he took his time. Uh, he's a serial author. He's written more than 60 books. So he took his time. And uh, in a couple of days' time, you know, I had his enthusiastic support, which I was really overwhelmed with. So we said, this is a great uh, message that we can carry to people. If we interview large cross-section of uh, seasoned HR professionals, their life story would be also very inspiring to the next generation of HR professionals who are uh, shaping their career. So that's how we got started, Esther. And I'm sure uh, Professor Rao may like to add uh, his perspective as to what went in his mind when he listened to me. Uh, you're you're on mute, uh, Dr. Ram. Yeah, there is a lot of construction going on here. And <laughs> because of the construction, there is continuous noise. Right. That comes, so that's why but but now you're very good. Now, yeah. now you're, yeah, we're not <laughs> hearing any construction noise. Yeah, well, I just sent Jaya to request them to stop for a while. Oh, that's very kind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, my reason, uh, of course, when Arvind uh, uh, connected with me, what impressed me was his use of the term making of HR leader. That is how he said. And uh, in fact, in most of our leadership uh, programs, we do talk of uh, Warren Bennis and his uh, uh, work on crucibles of leadership and things like that. So we th I thought that that's a very good way. In fact, my earlier book on uh, effective people dealt with all of non-corporate sector. I picked up people from teaching professions, social work, doctors, film actors, and all people. And I deliberately avoided the corporate sector because I felt that there is so much written about that. So when Arvind got back, I thought this is a good opportunity. And then when we let a large number of our chaps who are friends who are associated with HR in at work, as well as other professional bodies. I think we created, have been creating a lot of ripples in the business world, if you look at the last uh, 25 to 30 years. So then I thought that I think there's a great opportunity where Arvind and I can do that. And I think what really motivated me is Arvind's uh, passion. Uh, in fact, I think the first couple of years, it was really Arvind, two, three years, Arvind who went on interviewing people and then kept on. Of course, first he visited us at Ahmedabad and yeah. we had a long uh, discussion. After that, we hired uh, somebody from uh, Xavier Institute to do the summer, as a summer training to do the work and so on. Very I think nice. that is how we began. It, it almost, nice. even in deciding, we took almost a year. Yeah, that's true. Identifying criteria. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. So the focus is same. I think we should yeah. document, we should learn lessons, and yeah. we should have our own. I think people who, unfortunately, Esther, what happens is the Indian, even others and leaders, are not that much talked about in the rest of the world. Yeah. Even within our country, I think, except uh, in the recent past, 
a lot is being done in places like uh, i mean you have done for the bit to people matters otherwise uh, earlier all india management has been to do that uh, isha foundation i think has been bringing a lot of these leaders and there are a lot number of videos that are available but i think this is an in depth thing which i breaking of these leaders yeah. very present kind of thing that is what i think impressed me yeah. when i was about that and that's how we start it And, Wonderful. Thank and you if so you, much. And if you look at the list, Esther, yep. you know yep. each one of them. Yeah. And, and yep. I'm sure uh, each one of them have interacted with you, and yeah. you know them greatly. Yeah. Will you and, share the list, Arvin uh, and Dr. Rao? Because that yeah. will also give you some ideas that we right. may we may be able to do maybe a series. Yes. Uh, yes. And actually yeah. share maybe some right. leaders in the making kind of series. Right. Right. So, um, so because yeah. that could give us an opportunity to keep promoting the book and also kind of right. uh, connecting. So if right. you could share, right. you know, so let's yeah, go ahead, please. So, so we wanted to just deep dive in their lives. Yeah. What kind of childhood they had? What kind of yeah. conversations the family had when yeah. they were growing, and what kind of a shaping of their values, character happened? What were the points of inflections? Yeah. What choices did they make Very to become nice. who they have become? Beautiful. Beautiful. So that was the deep dive. Very nice. Very nice. So that takes me to the first question, which is really um, uh, trying to kind of synthesize what seems to be common. And of course, it may not be common among all of them, but there's something that emerges in terms of their personality, yeah. their character that has helped them be. uh crucibles in, as change makers right yeah, they were in the yeah. making but what is it that emerges to be common when you look at their personality traits their character yeah. descriptives um what emerges from from all of them what what seems to be a, a common factor or a common trait or character yeah so you know it, and when we started these interviews we really didn't know if there would be a pattern yeah because these are all unique personalities very very powerful in their own very right very different also very, very different, different upbringings very different everything yeah, very different so we didn't know whether there was any pattern correct but we were pleasantly surprised after the interviews were over and these interviews were long interviews esther uh 5 7 hours each wow wonderful and and uh, in the multiple rounds because in one round you can't do 5 7 hours so we kept Correct. taking breaks so it took us a Correct. while so we did find pattern and we presented that also our finding in the yeah. uh, after the stories immediately comes the chapter on crucible experiences yeah so let's just uh, share some highlights right please as a child all of them and they were not born necessarily in affluent family with a lot of means and i think it was divided half 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 of them were in affluent families but there were equally other half who were in the families who had a struggle of uh, putting a food on the table on an everyday basis sometimes raised by only a single mother because father had passed away and uh, and the young child is just 6 7 year old so they were such like modest families as well there were people in the metros but there were also people from the villages and uh, one pattern which we saw about the families irrespective of how affluent they were that they were having everyday behavior which was having very positive values building in the child's mind uh the value of for example abundance and sharing yeah. as opposed to scarcity and holding back so we found that the families uniformly were giving very positive values to the children in yeah. their through their everyday behavior and also they were connecting the child to the larger cause uh 
larger cause of the society or the nation. Yeah. Uh, you know, unlike uh, many times today, the families tend to focus much more linearly that you must educate yourself so that you can get a good job and prosper in life. Yeah. Which is a normal theme I hear even in the families of a lot of my country cousins, for example. Yeah. yeah. But these families, they connected them to much larger issues. Mm. By, by just the parents themselves took uh, you know, some kind of a participation in the larger causes. So the child actually saw father or mother involved in those kind of things. Uh, they were raising uh, funds for war widows. Uh, they were participating in the funeral procession of, uh, you know, a national leader like uh, Pandit Nehru, who, who died. So, you know, those kind of connection really broadened the perspective of the young child yeah. as early as yeah. that. That's yeah. the family. Yeah. Coming to a school and teacher, yeah, they have been very, very impactful. And I would request uh, Professor Rao to expand on that, as he has been a teacher himself for yeah. decades. Yeah, just one point that uh, I like to add on the family. I think the the kind of freedom they have given to the child it's a very interesting thing to let the child grow the way he or she. Uh, wants to grow while supporting with strong values, hard work yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And I think in some, in a few cases, mothers played a very critical role where there was no father, or even when the father is there in some cases. I think that's it. As far as the institutions are concerned, I think of, irrespective of why I think institutions like Tata Institute and uh, XLRI, IAM, these uh, by their own kind of uh, stature, they certainly mattered in uh, ways in terms of the curricula that they provided. But irrespective of the institutions, I think the teacher, the person, the professor there, seemed to have mattered quite a bit. I think for several of them took a lot of interest in these uh, young, yep. young, young chaps, worked with them, I think for a highly personalized kind of experiences. And most interesting thing we found was the kind of projects that they have given. Yeah, I think the projects they have given were large, a lot more on uh, social nature rather than only business related. Even in business, like in, in case of one leader asking uh, him to go and live with the uh, with the beggars or yeah. workers unions, I think these, these were very interesting, life changing kind of things. Yeah. In what case, I think the uh, the experiences, the project experiences, seem to have set the person to be highly. Uh, uh, what we nowadays call as corporate social responsibility, socially yeah. responsible. Yeah. So much so that towards the end of their uh, uh, career, many of them have uh, uh, gone to uh, undertake uh, social responsible kind of work. So, yeah. Yeah. And but I think teachers have, uh, in our view, yeah. have played a very significant role because many of these leaders mentioned uh, by name the teacher, the kind of impact yeah. that they have had. Yeah. And continued association, I think, as long as uh, uh, and, some of the teachers live and so on. So that's the great kind of thing. And TV, we also found uh, that the teachers had a personal connect with the student. Yeah. yeah. All of them. They acknowledge that they would be visiting teachers' house or they would be meeting during the off hour for an additional interaction, which was very impactful in many people made a choice of their profession based on the teacher's advice and the impact that the teacher had. Yeah. And, they, and they have acknowledged the specific names even. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. So as I hear you, um, um, I, 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 I can see that you know the environment where the early years really conditioned um, some of those stories. And that seems to be a um, a trend among all of them. Now, my question uh, is, what is that unique inclination that those individuals had uh, to actually be able to, 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 to take on 
because at the end of the day, you take what you are open to take. So maybe people are giving you, but you may or may not be open to take, you know, those projects or that connection with those special teachers. Or even, even as a, you know, as a child, you may or may not be as, you know, observant or, you know, uh, open to be inspired. So what is it that was different about their inclination or their approach yeah. to, to, you know, developing themselves or challenging? Is there anything internal that you noticed? Yeah, so, so, I mean, one thing we noticed was their consistent ability to ab observe, assimilate, yeah. and then live with mm -hmm. it learn learn and live with it so so this pattern we found right from the childhood now yeah. there, you might say that there may be some unique genes that they had <laughs> right so we didn't go there the raw material which the person was <laughs> born with so so that was beyond uh, this is scope the of scope the yes. scope of the project but but there is definitely a role the raw material would have played yeah yeah because even if you replicate everything that Got each it. one of them went through you may still not be able to have a designer child who grows like this correct correct uh, that's the uh, getting back to a specific point that you're yeah. raising so yeah. yeah there is a raw material part uh, which is a black box yeah well at the time they experienced the uh, on the age of school, some of the experiences may not have been that enjoyable. Yeah. But when they now look back, they tell us, yeah. I think, what a change it made. I think I, that is true with any crucible experience yeah. in life. You know, when you are actually going through that, it's yeah. a painful kind of a thing. Like one yeah. of the one of the leaders said that his interactions with one of the professors in a lab setting, he almost got torn into pieces. Yeah. He got his self yeah. destroyed, but then yeah. the same professor helped him to rebuild, and so he started seeing a new reality in life. Yeah. It yeah. was a painful experience, but I think the, the person remembers that that's a life changing experience kind of thing. Yeah. So, I would say the common thing, in, as Arvind has said, of all of them is their ability to learn, assimilate, even if they didn't enjoy at that point of time, yeah. reflect later what yeah. a negative event has made. Than to be and so on. So that's a remarkable kind of thing, which yeah. is true with later life experiences also. Right. Yeah. And and just to share an example yeah, of go ahead. Go ahead. personal bond, like yeah. one person narrates that he was, and as a small child, you know, maybe in class five, class six, he was not good in mathematics. Yeah. So much so that he didn't want to go and write the examination. His teacher, and this is in a village context, his teacher came in a cycle in the early hours to tell him he must come and write the examination. He was not telling him about mathematics. He was not telling him anything. But he said, you must come and write the examination. Yeah. But that personal care yeah. and concern, which the teacher showed to this person, yeah. He said, look, I not only have to write the examination, I have to excel in this subject. Yeah. And thereafter, he really moved and he never looked back. Yeah. Yeah. So there are any number of such examples in the book. And uh, but it shows that, you know, the personal connect, they were able yeah. to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So when you look at some of those uh, common traits, so whether it's about being positive, being resilient, uh, you talk about being observant, being, you know, having the capacity to assimilate yeah. and also in a way being responsible or accountable. If people are betting on you, you know, yeah. you need to step up for that. Absolutely. So are, Absolutely. You know, some of the things that I hear uh, yeah. are these traits that, you know, as you said, are being some of it may come from your black box your dna you know yeah. who you are as an individual or these are traits that can be actually nurtured sparked especially for leaders who will yeah. read the book looking at not only themselves but leveraging that for you know 
inspiring leaders within the organization. Yeah. So how much of it is part of the black box? How much of it is nurturable right. or sparkable? No, so all of these are nurtured and uh, what we call crucible experiences yes. that the person goes through right from the early childhood to even now we are going through crucible experiences at our stage in life. Yeah. So it's in that continuum, all these crucible experiences are shaping our belief and it is making us who we are becoming. So the slew of these experiences, and you don't realize at the time you're going through those experiences, but it's only with the hindsight when you do reflect, you realize that what a profound impact some many of these experiences have had on you. Yeah. So that is the entire, uh, you know, the core message of the book is uh, learning from crucible experiences. Yeah. And all of them, in fact, if you look at each of those persons during their childhood, they, they were ordinary people. There were no nothing special about any of them actually. And in the moment <laughs> they were growing, but yeah. they become special. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Arvin. Any comment on that, Dr. Rao? Because you have, of course, done a lot of work on leadership development and you have seen uh, no, how I it's. Think, Go I ahead, think please. It, is, it is really the uh, people who seem to matter in terms of impacting them. Yeah. And they uh, certainly they have uh, learned from these people, uh, from other people, whether it is a boss or a colleague or even a junior and things like that. So we discovered that whether it is in the college or school or later yeah. in the first job, or it's all the time. I think it's people and people who seem to have impacted. And if I look back, I think all these people, whether it is a teacher yeah. or a uh, boss or a colleague, are people with commitment and values. Yeah. Which I think when, as I mentioned, it comes out, it's not that uh, we, these are all uh, uh, textbook kind of people and therefore yeah. they are there to influence. But I think it is, uh, look, looking back, all the teachers that were mentioned are people who are committed to their profession, committed to students, and uh, comes back to treating the person as a human being with potential. Yeah. Same thing in a company, in the first job, treating with and when, and taking some hard decisions. If you have to put somebody to do a routine job, like that means I'll tell you interesting things where somebody is asked to for three months maintain only the uh, attendance register or simply look at uh, the employees seems to be a routine thing. But I think the, the person only later realized what a great experience it has been for him to know the entire company uh, by the simple act of having to yeah. maintain the attendance register. Or, uh, I mean, Arun will tell you many experiences. Uh, for us, the significant uh, finding was uh, we, we never realized this. I think this book, even in my view, it opened up my eyes in terms of uh, the importance of going through industrial relations experiences. Yeah. It's the experience itself. Nobody has asked them, but very tough experiences. Like in the case of one leader, when he found that uh, his manager was being garroted, he went promptly and complained and lodged a complaint with the local district magistrate. But when he returned back and told this proudly to the seniors, they said, what a mistake you have made. You have further created problems for us. You should never have done this. Then he yeah. goes back to the district magistrate to take back the complaint he filed. And then he get, gets banging from the, so that is the early years of the career, you can yeah. see so what, what kind of an impact? And he says, this is what has built me. Whatever I have done, I think I have done probably right, but I should be prepared for facing the consequences. So I think it is the people. I, I would say uh, that is what makes it uh, HR leaders somewhat yeah. unique because it's all people oriented and so on. Right. Would you agree with that? Or, I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, beyond teachers and uh, the corporate managers, Sometimes yes. there are people out there in a wider social system, your neighbors, yes. for example. In one instance, you wouldn't believe is a story of a person who was doing pretty badly academically. He was uh, repeating the class one after another. He was not passing even. 
so he had no great future but his father was a bank manager so one day a neighbor who came to meet the bank manager he gave him a neighborly advice that while you are still a manager why can't you get your son employed as a peon in the bank and in time he can uh, make his living now this conversation this young boy overheard and it disturbed him to no end and after the neighbor had left he talked to his father that who does he think he is he is tell telling you that all i can become is a peon i will show that i will be somebody some day and i'll be employing people like him thousands of people i'll be employing like him and he said that was a crucible moment for for him he then changed completely he began to take his studies seriously and uh, he he became a chro of one of the global multinational for, for whole of asia pack and if i say anything more you will recognize who the person <laughs> i will let you read the book for that i will have to read the book to find out now <laughs> so so you know now this neighbor did not know that he is causing this impact on young child so crucible experiences truly is crucible it's a melting pot yeah where so many people are bringing in their experiences and something somewhere yeah has such a experience yeah which is uh, life changing yeah so yeah. what we've done is we've captured those crucible experiences through the life journey of people yeah and 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 try to trace uh, how these have impacted the person awesome awesome and i'm going to i'm going to ask you some few questions on crucible experience uh, dr rao anything to add yeah no i think uh, i would there's a bit yeah please yeah. go ahead yeah great so i'm going to ask you some more questions on crucible experience but i'll hold that for a minute sure. because i want to kind of uh, go one step back again to say okay we talk about values we talk about um uh, context or stakeholders in a way that yeah. influence those crucible experiences and uh, interested to know as well what other patterns you saw in terms of you know maybe career paths that they chose or you know their uh leadership style or any any other patterns or trends that you saw among those leaders that can help us kind of understand that persona of of leaders in the making or you know people who have been able to become change makers and impact any other patterns that you saw yeah so so few patterns which uh, do become very evident is that they all were very mindful of businesses that they were immersed in so so they understood the business and many of them took actually business roles also out of 30 nearly half of them had substantive business roles at one point or other yeah. and yeah. those business experiences were also crucible experiences from there they learned it's like getting into the kitchen and experiencing the heat Yeah. to know how the food comes on the table so so they had those experiences that's that's uh, one part of it the second part is connecting with people so all of them found ways and means regardless to how senior they became on continuing to connect with people and professor rao talked about uh, industrial relation experience so yeah. that's one way you 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 are literally not even in crucible you are in a furnace yeah and and through that you are connecting with individuals at the deep end and you are learning from it yeah so whether it's a white collar environment or whether it's the uh, blue collar environment these people all had a connect with people yeah. and they had personally handled the individual issues dissolving their uh, uh, concerns dealing with uh, 
difficult situations like gerao and all of such like things so yeah. these are you know and they were not either or they were not business oriented or they were not totally people oriented they were yeah. both and yeah also awesome. and yes yeah. thank you and another pattern we observed is uh, that uh, besides being business oriented their functional uh, orientation which are as a function they are not stuck to uh, any one particular uh, sub function sub system of hr when yeah. they had to do with performance management they have done a wonderful job what got into what is happening our industrial relations our career planning i think they exhibited i must say quite a bit of uh, versatility in yeah. terms of managing the function and whatever is required at that point of time and also i think uh, the some of them when they had to face new geographies or totally uh, new set of departments i think the ability to integrate business with people yeah is, i think is a remarkable thing that we observed in these and that is what makes them more different and yeah. if i would say any any person has to be go beyond the hr any function whatever you may be i think this is what is required how do you integrate and to me people uh, is a good way of integrating business without people you can't do any business that's loud and clear it comes yeah. and, and another as, part yeah. go ahead go ahead tv yeah, as uh, arvin mentioned they connect with people i mean we which came up earlier also in my earlier book on 100 managers in action networking is a networking for learning you network and use networks as not everyone is so well networked some of them are uh, a few of yeah. them maybe i would say out of 30 maybe 10 15 percent of them are more tending towards a little bit and uh, more uh, less intro uh, less extrovert is more introvert yeah. even 20 yeah. percent i would say but whenever they connected with people it is with a desire to learn so they used people as sources of learning this i think is a the remarkable thing we found in all these guys. Yeah. Do you agree with that, Arman? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, another aspect which I recall that most of them did not wait for somebody else to define the job for them. Because oftentimes when you are in a senior position, yeah. the job is not defined and you wonder where, where have I landed? Yeah. And, and then you become uh, irritated, you become disillusioned, and you start looking out. But yeah. instead, these people actually try to understand what does the business really require? What do the people here really would value? And, and, and then they created a role for themselves. Yeah. And they ultimately found that the role they have created for themselves is uh, is relevant to the business and people are also valuing it yeah so, so they had this inner urge and clarity yeah that they have to take charge and define it for themselves yeah yeah so i love to expand on on this point that you just mentioned uh, especially in our current context that organizations are struggling with you know whether we're calling it quiet quitting or the great reshuffling and you're talking about leaders who actually saw all those challenges as opportunities or as crucibles perfect, perfect. that's very so nice how, how do we how do we use those stories to actually inspire you know the younger generation or uh, to say well you're struggling with you know that's a good thing yeah. So yeah. how do we convert those into uh, the, those stories the, the, into opportunities for learning? Right, right, absolutely. And uh, so one major differentiator is that when you are waiting for some others to define the role and make it meaningful, you are giving a lot of power to others. But what about discovering power within? Because you have, are special to be in that situation you've had education, you've come that far in life. So there's a lot in you. So naturally, if you discover your power, then you will be able to make a difference in the situation rather than running away and discovering uh, and trying to find 
another context in which somebody else will give you again a role responsibility etc so i think that's a big shift to discover own leadership and then play that out yeah and dr these, rao anything these, to add and all of these people have done that no yeah. i think <laughs> No, I don't have. I think you can awesome. go ahead with your next question. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arvind, for that. So going uh, back to the designing of crucible experiences. So in the book, these are experiences that life, in many ways, threw to those leaders. And I'm sure some of them, like the teacher experience, was intentional or designed because actually the teacher planned it and she acted on it and it created. So, what does it mean to us as HR professionals, as leader profession, lead, uh, leadership development, L and D professionals? How do we, uh, in a way, we're in a hurry. We can't wait for life to give us experiences, even though we do have a lot of them already because of the uncertain business environment. But how do we design uh, uh, crucial experiences that actually help, you know, unlock or help? you know that aha moment that many of your leaders had in multiple times in their in their in their stories yeah yeah so uh, you know every moment when somebody is interacting with another person is a moment of truth at it, as it is called but those moments could also be crucible experiences for the other person but you have to be purposeful you have to be authentic in what you're saying like uh, one manager when he visited the factory site this young person who had just come from xlri and and this is a major multinational again i'm talking about he had been 6 months on the job and he had done what he thought was terrific job and he was showing him around after half a day was over this visiting manager told him that look it's very impressive what you've shown but you know whatever you've done i could have hired somebody with no education at all and that person would have equally done this because you've shown me the beautiful horticulture that you've done the cleanliness in the canteen and uh, the restrooms are very hygienically maintained and all of that which is terrific what you've done but you are an xlri student what do you think is your role here so the very fact that the manager asked him that question created a crucible experience for the person for him to narrate that with us 40 year hence yeah for him to discover the dimensions of his job yeah otherwise he was doing a maintenance role and he would have not grown company would not have benefited so in every interaction that we have as manager we have to be mindful of the impact that we have uh, we have uh, we have the opportunity to create that impact yeah and these would be simple questions simple statements one doesn't have to really design but of course that said one can design the exposure of the individual like we talked about uh, exposure to industrial relations today a lot of young hr professionals don't go in industrial relations they sit behind the computer they are doing all kinds of analysis they are sending out policies they are interviewing on the video but they have no connect with the people they don't have the immersive industrial relation experience likewise uh, experience with the businesses we found that there is a, so much merit that every hr person must go through 2 3 years of accountable business role somewhere in their career they should work under demanding boss so so these are design aspects that in a career path you can design these immersive experiences for the individual to learn from so that would be the other aspect which would be very helpful 
I I would uh, certainly like what Raghavendra is saying. Focus on uh, how people experience. Most of the time, the organizations don't design crucible experiences. So like uh, one organization may may go out of way to send the head of the unit to receive you if you are a fresher at the railway station. Yeah. Whereas another organization may say you find your way. There is not even an accommodation for you. You even work out your accommodation and so on. Now I think they have some plan, but when you you are on the receiving end, you can't choose your crucible. All that we can say is, I think the lesson from all these leaders is when an experience comes, learn to get the best out of it, enjoy it because some, however painful it may be at that point of time, it may become the best teacher later. Yeah. So I think uh, the lesson is uh, to learn to live life with. Uh, uh, with enjoyment, looking at it from multiple angles, learn values, ask questions, uh, ask for the purpose and other kind of thing. Because any leader, if you look at all a series of experiences, is what made them. Starting with family, then the school, then the college, then the first job, yeah. then the bosses. So it is the points and points and points that have made them what they are. So the common point is you, the leader. The way the person went through, experienced, and then I think they. So I think it was this is the biggest lesson that uh, we make our lives. That is why, uh, Arvind, I keep saying there is a leader in everyone. You have to recognize the leader, and all the time, and everything passes. Nothing is permanent. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Exactly. And and that leader within you, use that to deal with the situation however challenging that situation may be, and then have the humility to learn from it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Rao. Thank you. Thanks, Arbin. So my last uh, question, and I know we are almost five minutes, and I want to spend at least two, three minutes on next steps and how else people makers can support uh, right. the book reaching out to to more people in the community. Um, tell us a little bit more about, I think uh, uh, Ramya was sharing that there is uh, you know, kind of a contribution. The book is not just full of amazing content, but it's also the royalties will be pledged for NHRD to continue to invest in working leadership. Do you want to take us, tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. I would request Professor Rao to take the lead on this. Yeah, well, actually, uh, after we completed the book, uh, and when we say this in print, we started feeling what more that needs to be done. I must say that uh, at least I have become more restless after the book has come out. <laughs> because we already find so much scope to be done. And one of the issues on which both of us are concerned is uh, that we could get only uh, two women among the leaders. We contacted the third one, we couldn't include it. This part of this may have happened because of the period of the leadership. That, If you look yeah. at, I think, just 10 years later, I mean, yeah. if you look at last 10 years, I think the number of women that have uh, uh, shown up their leadership quality. So one, we are interested in uh, people to document like what we have done here. Yeah. Uh, many more, yeah. do, a lot more documentation of different age groups. Yeah. In those who are, uh, I think these chap, these people may have been born in fifties and sixties. Yeah. One cohort, seventies yeah. and eighties. Another cohort. Yeah. I think that's where this yeah. starts. I think we need to look at those uh, born data and from other sectors. I think if we then move on to and other functions, I think it will be very nice to see uh, what happens in marketing. I I don't think you can escape people anywhere you go. But they don't need to be HR leaders. They yeah. are people leaders. So, yeah. so our way uh, forward is encourage a lot of a lot more literature. I Absolutely. think like this book, if uh, in the next three to four years they can be. 30, 40 other books. Uh, yeah. I think we have uh, done leadership uh, engine, what yeah. uh, uh, one of the others from Michigan talks about. I think creating a leadership engine yeah. so that there are everyone discovers. I sometimes feel that even a, a helper in the house, yeah. our housemaid, for example, you get our housemaid, the way she comes, the way she works, and the way she talks about her young MBA son. You see, remember, she's earning for an MBA son. He wants to have a computer, and her husband doesn't contribute as much. And to me, she's a great leader. Yeah. So, how do we extend this entire concept of leadership? 
and yeah. make a lot and lot of people to discover this. So the little research we are talking of in um, HRD and National HRD Network, if they can promote in other sectors more literature, uh, more, yeah. uh, I think, sharing. Uh, and also for this, we want the institutions to become instrumental. In fact, we're thinking maybe they can be a faculty development program. We can't give courses in every college, but we can train trainers who can in turn offer courses. In fact, both of us prepared some course outlines and so on. All this, we are expecting the uh, uh, HRD network to, not only yeah. HRD network, people matters, yeah. but yeah. anyone. I think this will be a great contribution to the society. And this is what some of our leaders are doing at the yeah. back in their, of their career, contributing to the society in a bigger way and so on.